warmest of greetings to you. I am your storyteller, Chip, and you know, folks in the southern United States will tell you that there was a time when animals could talk, and there was a time when animals wore clothes, and those same animals would build the farms to grow their food. They worked really hard on those farms, did those animals, all except for one, the one they called Br'er Bunny. Br'er Bunny was not patient enough to be a farmer. He would rather steal the food from other people's farms until the day came that Br'er Bunny calls the day of great shame. Before that day, Br'er Bunny would steal the food from all of the other farms that the other animals had worked really hard to get food from. Animals like bison, the cow with lots of big, curly, fluffy hair all over its body, that really big, furry, fluffy fur coat. Well, Br'er Bunny would go to his farm and take his food and run off with it. And if Bison tried to chase after Bunny, well, Bunny would just turn around and say, You can't catch me, Bison! Your fur's too thick! And he would also sometimes steal food from the farm of Tortoise. And if Tortoise came out and saw Br'er Bunny running away with his food, Bunny would just turn around and say, You can't catch me, Tortoise! Your shell's too heavy! And sometimes Bunny would even steal from the farm of Fox. And if Fox came out and caught Bunny running away, well, he was quite fast. But he was never quite fast enough to catch Bunny. Partly because Bunny would turn around and say, You can't catch me, Fox! Your nose is too long! And it didn't matter whether it was Fox or Tortoise or bison. They would be so hurt by Bunny's words that it would make them very sad and it would slow them down. Fox. He'd been stolen from by Bunny probably more than any of the others and he decided it was time for all of this to stop. He didn't like Bunny saying that his nose was too long and he thought it was about time he actually caught Bunny and stopped him. It was also quite nice thinking that he might get to have a rabbit stew out of it because if he caught Bunny, he could put him in a nice big cooking pot and then have him as minced meat. So, right at the start of this story, Br'er Fox had a very cunning idea. He went into his workshop and he used all of his carpentry skills, like some sawing, which you can do as well if you like. You can do a bit of sawing. <laughs> Just watch your thumbs if you're going to do that. <laughs> and he did a bit of hammering. Bang! Bang! Again, watch your thumbs if you're doing this. Bang! Bang! And he did a bit of planing, which is the one that you do to make things nice and smooth, like this. Shh! 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 And by the time he'd finished, he had made a model bunny, something that looked exactly like a rabbit, except it was wood. So then he dipped it in a big bucket of a sticky black goo called tar. And after dipping the bunny into that bucket and pulling it out, he had something that looked almost exactly like a bunny, just covered in black tar. It was a tar bunny. And he put that bunny in his farm, put it there so that Br'er Bunny would find it. He left it there 
And of course he had gloves on so he himself wouldn't get stuck to the tar bunny. He went back into his house and looked out through his window to see what would happen next. And sure enough, a little while later, along came Brer Bunny. And when Brer Bunny came along, at first he didn't notice the tar bunny. He was just busy stealing some of Fox's food and gobbling it down. But when he did see the tar bunny there, his first thought was to say, Hey, you! Get out of this farm! I'm the one stealing here! This is my food to steal! And the tar bunny said, Nothing. Because it wasn't a real bunny, was it? But of course, Bread Bunny didn't know that. So he said, okay, now look at this. If you are gonna be rude and you're not even gonna talk to me, then, well, you just need to, you just need to get, you need to get out of here, or, or I will, I will, I will hit you. I will, I'll thump you. Still, the tar bunny said, nothing. nothing. So Bread Bunny, got his fist ready and he said, all right, I warned you, here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> and when he punched the tar bunny, the tar bunny seemed to be holding on to his fist. He couldn't get his fist back from the tar bunny. And Brad Bunny said, look here. <sighs> Give me back my hand! If you don't give me back my hand, I'll, I'll, I'll hit you with my other fist! I will, I'll, I'll hit you with my other fist! The tar bunny said, nothing. So bunny said, all right, I warned you, here he comes! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, give me back my hand. Uh, give me back my other hand. Uh, all right, if you don't give me back my hands, I'll, I'll, I'll kick you. I will, I'll kick you. And the tar bunny said, nothing. nothing. So bunny said, all right, I warned you. Here he comes! Give me back my foot! Give me back my foot! If you if you don't give me back my foot and my hands right now, I'll 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 kick it with the other foot! I will! I'll kick it with the other foot! And the tar bunny said. So Brer Bunny said, all right, I, I warned you, here he comes. And by now, Bunny realized he was in trouble. He realized he had made a mistake. He was now absolutely trapped in that tar bunny. And it wasn't long after that, that Fox came out from his house with gloves on to detach Bunny from the tar bunny and carry him off <laughs> all the way back towards Fox's kitchen. And as they were crossing the farm back to Fox's house, Bunny hung there in Fox's hands, feeling very, very silly, very embarrassed, so ashamed. He'd only got himself into this situation because he had rushed in thinking with his fists instead of with his head. He'd been a bit of a bully, hadn't he? He hadn't wanted to share. He'd even been stealing in the first place. If only he had stopped to think. If only he had stopped to think, then he could have been, he could have been 
bouncing through those fields of thorny bushes like he loved to, the, the thorny bushes that ran along the, the edges between the farms. Oh, if only he had stopped to think he would have been able to be doing that right now. And as he hung there, and as he thought about how he should have been thinking, suddenly a thought popped into his head. <laughs> and so he looked up at Fox and he said, Oh, Fox, what are you going to do to me? What are you going to do to me? How are you going to teach me my lesson? And Fox replied, Oh, Bunny, I am so glad I've got you now because I am going to put you in a nice big cooking pot and I'm going to cook you and I'm going to eat you. And Br'er Bunny replied, Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is so kind of you, Fox. That really is kind of you. It is so kind of you. Just, just whatever you do, please don't throw me into those thorny bushes over there. Please, whatever you do, don't throw me into those thorny bushes over there. That would just be awful. Well, Fox wasn't expecting that. He held Bunny up and he said, well, hold on a minute, Bunny. I'm not just going to, to cook you. No, I'm also going to, I'm going to pluck out all of the fur from your body. Yeah, I'm going to pluck you. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And Bunny said, you're going to pluck me? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Fox. Oh, that is so kind of you. That is, that is such a nice thing to do. I mean, plucking me and then, and then cooking me and eating me. That is so nice. Just whatever you do, don't throw me into those thorny bushes over there. That would be awful. That would be the worst thing ever. <laughs> and Fox really wasn't expecting that either. He held Bunny up and and couldn't even understand why he was looking so happy and, and grateful. So he said, I, I really don't think you understand, Bunny. I'm not just going to, to cook you and, and pluck out all of your fur. I'm going to skin you. I'm going to take off all your skin before I eat you. And Bunny said, you're going to skin me? Oh, thank you so much, Fox. Thank you so much. Oh, that is so kind of you. Oh, to, to skin me and then pluck me and, and cook me and eat me. Oh, that is so good of you. You are such the, the, the kindest fox ever. Just, just for not throwing me in those thorny bushes over there. That would have been the worst thing in the world. <laughs> well, now, Br'er Fox was getting a little bit angry. And he said, all right, Bunny, you need to be taught a lesson. You need to not be happy. So do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw you in those thorny bushes over there. And Bunny suddenly looked terrified and said, no, no, whatever happened, please, Fox, don't do that, don't do that, please don't do that. But Fox, wasn't listening to Bunny anymore. And he threw Bunny all the way into those thorny bushes. And he felt pretty satisfied with himself until he saw Bunny hop out from the thorny bushes, which didn't bother him at all, by the way. He was bouncing up and down through those thorny bushes saying, thank you, Fox. Thanks for letting me go. Cheerio! <laughs> and off Cheerio. Bunny bounced. And you know, from that day on, Br'er Bunny did start to think with his mind before anything else. He started making much better decisions. And if you look in a library, or if you find the folks from the southern United States and you ask them, they will have many more stories to share with you about Br'er Bunny and how he used his brain, sometimes to steal food, but not just for himself. When he started using his brain, 
he started finding himself doing a lot for other people too. As for this story, Brer Bunny, like I said at the start, has his own name for it. And that name was The Day of Great Shame. For Fox. Thank you so much for sharing that story with me. I love Brer Bunny. After he got clever, he came up with some pretty fun ideas, didn't he? I think that's why his stories are some of my favorites. And if you'd like to hear me singing you a story about one of the times he used his clever brain for good, then have a go at our epic challenge. Send your creativity to me and you will unlock a bonus story. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. <laughs>